AI is taking over. If you don't add it to your app, you're cooked. So we're going to be adding this. Whoa. To our next JS app using the app router, of course. So let's do it. All right. So first I'm going to show you the easy way. Then I'm going to explain the easy way more in depth so that you could create a more custom solution. So I created this NPM package called next AI stream. I have the link to that in the description. So all we're going to do is we're going to add this to our project. So we're going to open this up in our terminal. I'm using PMPM. So I'm going to paste this in. It's going to load all this in. This is designed to work with the app router with Next.js 15 specifically. And then we're going to copy this. We're going to put this in source AI index. So we're going to come over here to source. And we're going to say AI slash index.ts. We're going to paste that in. We're going to add this to this route right here. So we're going to copy this. We're going to come over here. We're going to come into this app route. We're going to say API slash chat slash route.ts. We're going to paste that in. And then we're going to copy this code right here. Paste this in the home page. So let's come over to the home page. Paste this in. And so now we can see we have our UI right here. Now all we have to do is add the open AI package. So we're going to say PMPM add open AI. And if you see right here, I'm using an XAI base URL. So if you go to the XAI website, you want to interact with the X API as opposed to the open AI API. You will read and see that the XAI API is compatible with both the OpenAI SDK and the Anthropic SDK. So we're going to be using the OpenAI SDK. And so all you have to do is come right here, new file, we're going to say .env.local, and then and we call this API key. So we're going to pass this in, and then we're going to get an API key from either OpenAI or XAI. I, of course, prefer XAI. Grok's taking over. Grok's the future. So I'm going to show you how to set that up now. So you're going to head over to this link. I'll have this in the description and you're just simply going to create an API key. Once you create that API key, you're going to paste it in here. So I'm going to do that now. So you can see right here, I got this API key. I've got it pasted in here. Don't use this because I'm going to delete this, of course. And now that we have this and we have this base URL set to this, this is going to work. If you're using the open AI API key, then you're going to have to set this to the open AI link. So now if we come over to this and we just say, what's up? We can see that this is just automatically immediately working. It's that simple. And if we come over here to the app page, we can see that this function right here called use AI chat stream, it gives us the messages, submit new message function and loading. So basically while it's streaming, this loading is going to be true. When it's done, loading is going to be false. This submit new message is how we obviously submit the message. And then the messages is an array of this chat complete message param. And this is a type that comes from the open AI library. And so if you just want to very quickly add this to your app, you're using Next.js 15 app router. You can just simply import this. I already wrote all the code. Boom. It's going to work. All you have to do is make sure this API endpoint is set to where you have it, which is right here. We have an API slash chat, API slash chat, and then the system prompt. This is like, let's say you're making a, a cooking AI. You're going to say, you are the world's best chef. People are going to ask you cooking questions, blah, blah, blah. If you want to actually write a very good system prompt, what you should do is talk to an AI and write a prompt that says, I'm writing a prompt for an AI. It needs to be really good at cooking. People are going to ask questions like whatever. And then the AI will give you a prompt and then you kind of tweak it a little bit and then you paste in that prompt right here. So if you want to know more about what's going on under the hood, the NPM package I made only has two functions. So it has this use AI chat stream. This is a custom hook. You're going to use this in a client component. The only other thing it has is this right here, which is the API endpoint. And it's just this function right here, which simply returns get and post. And then we export these. And this is how you use routes in Next.js 15. So if you want to set this up a little more custom and you need to tweak this and this is not working for you, you can contribute to the project. Or what you can do is simply go to the repo for all of the code that I wrote. The link for that is in the description. And you can just copy all of this code, paste it into your project, and then tweak it however you want. So it's right here. We just simply have this function right here. Use AI chat stream. We already saw we passed in the API endpoint, the system prompt, and then it's just using some state loading state. And then we have the submit new message and 
how this works is every time we submit the new message, we are locally in our React app, we are saving every single message that we have sent to the AI and that they have sent back to us. And so every single time we send a new message, we pass in an array of all of these messages. So it's not very efficient, but that is how this is done. Every single time you're in chat GPT and you send a new message, the AI doesn't have a memory. You're just sending in the entire conversation every single time. And so that's exactly what this is doing. And so one thing that might be slightly confusing that I will explain right now is why this gives us the get request and the post request. So how this works is we initially send in the post request and the post request is going to have all of the messages. If you're gonna send an API request, you're not gonna put a bunch of data in a get request. No one ever does that. So we have to send all of the data in a post request. But to stream it in, we have to use server sent events. And we can't use post requests with this. We have to use a get request. So what we do is on the front end, we send this post request with all of the data. Then on the back end, here's the post request, this create chat job. And this is very simple. All it does is get all of the messages and it simply adds to this object right here called jobs, a key value pair with the job ID and the array of messages. And so now this object is stored on the back end, which we can see is right here. So maybe you have you want to use like Redis or, or you want to use something else. This is probably not going to scale that well. But if you just want a very simple solution, this is going to work just fine. This create chat job is going to basically add the, you know, whatever the ID is, and then it's going to add the array of all the messages that look like this. So now this is sitting here on the back end. So we come back to the hook and we see that we get the job ID, which is this right here. So now we start up the server sent event, which is a get request under the hood. So we just use new event source. We pass this in and we pass in the job ID. So now in this get request, this is where all the AI stuff happens. So we pass in the request to this function. We also pass in the jobs which is this right here, we can get rid of all this. And we pass in the client, this is the open AI client, and then the model, which is just a string for what the model is. And in this stream chat completion function, this is where we're actually communicating with XAI servers, and we're getting the chat stream, and then we're using server sent events to stream in the data to the front end. So I would recommend just simply importing this package. It's gonna be good for most use cases. If you're doing something that's trying to scale or as a very specific use case, then you could just copy and paste that code and tweak it as much as you want in your own project. So I've done a lot of research on this and this from my understanding is the industry standard. So you send the post request with all of the data, you then create the job, you store all the data, and then you have to send the get request to start the server sent events to stream in the data. So to add the styling, what you're gonna do is a couple of things. You're going to get this file right here, ai.css, get this from the GitHub repo, copy it, paste it. You're gonna go to layout. You're just gonna simply import this. And then where you use this, you're gonna go like this. You're gonna dangerously set inner HTML and you're gonna put this class name, AI content. And you're only gonna do this if the message role is not the user. If it's the user, it's your stuff, you're just typing it in normally. And then in the system prompt, you need to specifically say to format it as HTML. So if you don't do this, it's just going to be like one giant word document with no styling whatsoever. You need to specify that you want it to be HTML format, which is exactly what ChatGBT and Grok do. So you need to make sure to specify this and add the styling if you want it to look like that in the output. So there it is. If you learned something, subscribe. You want to learn some more? Watch this video right here. See you next time.